Welcome to Electron Line. Here's method number three to find the force on the slanted portion of a dam. And this method, I think, is the most ingenious method of them all. It's actually really easy, really quick, and it's almost strange that it actually works. But let me show you what it is. Here's the equation that the force on the slanted portion of a dam is equal to the water that's contained within this wedge. If you go out to the very foot of the, the slant right here and you draw a line straight up, you have a, a triangular portion here. And of course, if you then go ahead and look at the dam in this way, you have kind of like a triangular wedge. The weight of the water of that triangular wedge divided by the cosine of the angle of the slant relative to the horizontal will give you the force against that slanted portion of the dam. So what we need to do is find the weight of this portion right here. The weight is, of course, equal to the mass times gravity. And since we know that the density of a fluid is equal to the mass divided by the volume, we can write the mass in terms of density times volume. So the weight is equal to the density of the fluid times the volume times acceleration due to gravity. So what we need to do here is find the volume of this triangular wedge. The volume will be equal to the area of the base right here, that would be one half, the height times the width right here, and let's call this section equal to x, so we'll put in x for now, times the width of the dam, of course there's a certain amount of width, in this case the width is 30 meters, the height is 8 meters. So what is x equal to? We can use the arc tangent to find x, because this is the opposite side to x, so we can say that the tangent of 30 degrees by definition is equal to the ratio of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, h. That means that um, x is equal to h times the tangent of 30 degrees and x is equal to 8 meters times the tangent of 30 degrees. And with a calculator, let's find out what that is equal to. 30, take the tangent times 8 equals, so we get 4.62 meters. X is equal to 4.62 meters. We'll plug that up here. X equals 4.62 meters, which also will get plugged in here. Now we have the volume. From that we can get the weight. The weight is equal to rho times the volume, which is 1 half times H times X times W times g. And then if we take that and plug it up in here and divide by the cosine of theta, we can find the force against the slanted portion of the dam. The force is equal to one half the density times h times x times w times g all divided by the cosine of theta and plug it in the numbers. We get f is equal to one half times a thousand kilograms per cubic meter. h is eight meters x is 4.62 meters, w was 30 meters, g is 9.8, and then we divide by the cosine of, in this case will be 60 degrees. So f will be 500 times 8 times 4.62 times 30 times 9.8 divided by the cosine of 60, which is a half, and we get 10.87 times 10 to the 6th Newtons, which is the same answer that we got in the previous videos. So it works quite remarkably. Now, what we can do here is do a few more attempts here. What if the wedge is smaller like this, where we have an angle of 80 degrees or an angle of 89 degrees? What would be the force in those cases? So all we have to do is find the distance x, which is of course smaller and smaller as the angle gets bigger here, to find the new volume and then divide by a different angle. So let's try the case where the angle is 80 degrees. So when theta is equal to 80 degrees, we can see that x is equal to 8 meters times the tangent of now that would be the other angle, that would be 90 minus 80, or the tangent of 10 degrees. So take 10, take the tangent of that, times 8 equals, in that case, x will be equal to 1.41 meters. Then we plug that in here, so then we can say that the force 
is equal to the weight divided by the cosine of 80 degrees. The weight in that case will be 1 half times the density times h times x times w times g divided by the cosine of 80 degrees. Plugging in the numbers, we get 1 half times 1,000 times h, still 8. x will now only be 1.41. w is still 30, the width. G is 9.8, and now we divide by the cosine of 80 degrees. Let's see what we get in this case. 500 times 8 times 1.41 times 30 times 9.8 divided by the cosine of 80 equals, and now the total force will be 9 million point five five times 10 to the sixth Newton. So you can see that it's a little bit less as the slant gets smaller and smaller, as it becomes closer and closer to a vertical dam, you can see that the force eventually will get very close to what it would be when it was just a vertical dam. Remember the answer for that? Let's go ahead and work that out. The force was equal to the average pressure times the area, in this case that would be the pressure at the halfway point, which is one half, rho gh, the area would be equal to h times the width, the height times the width for the total area of the dam it was vertical. So let's go ahead and see what that would be equal to. So that would be, again, half the density that would be 500 times g is 9.8 times h squared, that's 64, times 30, and we get, that would be a total force of 9.41 times 10 to the 6th Newtons. Notice how this number is getting closer and closer to that. What would it be if the angle was only 1 degree? It should be really close to that amount. So let's try it again. In this case, kind of running out of room. So let me go ahead and make myself a little bit more room here on this side. For the angle being equal to 1 degree or... Maybe I should say 89 degrees, depending upon which angle we're talking about. Then the, the angle between the vertical and the slanted slope would be just 1 degree. X would then be equal to 8 meters times the tangent of just 1 degree. X would therefore be equal to, take the tangent of 1, times 8 equals 0. 1396 meters and then the total force the force would be equal to the weight divided by the cosine of 89 degrees the weight would be equal to one half the density times the height times x times the width times g divided by the cosine of 89 degrees plugging in the numbers to see what we would get and again i would expect an answer very very close to this value right here this is equal to one half times a thousand times eight times 0 0.1396 times W, which is 30 times G, which is 9.8, all divided by the cosine of 89 degrees. And let's see what we get. 500 times eight times 0 0.1396 times 30 times 9.8 and divide by the cosine of 89 degrees, and I get 9.407 times 10 to the sixth Newtons. Notice how close we got to the value right here. 9.407, 9.41 times 10 to the sixth. Slight rounding error, but that's okay. We got really close to that value, which indicate that the equation actually works. No matter what the angle is, if we have a straight slant like this, we can find the force by calculating the weight of the wedge of water and dividing it by the cosine of this angle right here. Really interesting how that also gives you the correct value for any angle you can want. And that's how we do that.